All right, it's finally here. This is the Risa Mueller multi-tinker. We've been waiting for this one for a while. We heard that it was gonna come last year, but it's finally here. Probably one of the first ones on the East Coast of the US. They rushed to get it to me to make this video, and I'm pretty excited to tell you about it. Risa Mueller introduced a bunch of new bikes this year. This is one of the ones I've been most excited about. It's their compact cargo bike. So it kind of expands on their tinker model, but it just makes it a little bit longer. and that's kind of how their name goes multi means it has this long rear end and the tinker is kind of the base model it's got the bosch smart system belt drive loads of different accessories and it's just a, a really well put together bike with lots of little details that they thought through really well so for those of you not familiar risa mueller is a premium e-bike manufacturer based in germany and they've been in business since 1994. they got their start with the compact bike it's called the risa mueller birdie that bike is a full suspension folding bike i think one of the only ones on the market like it but this is kind of a different animal this bike is intended to be a cargo bike it's intended to carry things whether you want to carry kids you want to carry cargo you want to carry a friend it can handle it. Risa Mueller builds all of their bikes in Mutal, Germany in a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility and they're really committed to sustainability. Their whole facility is covered in solar panels and they make really intentional decisions about the way that they source parts and the whole supply chain. So it's one of the reasons they're kind of one of my favorite e-bike brands. Risa Mueller has a pretty wide selection of bikes and a really wide selection of cargo bikes kind of leading the industry in a lot of ways. This is the multi-tinker. They have the multi-charger. They have the load in a 60 and 75, the Paxter, and another bike called the Transporter. So loads of different options. I encourage you to check them out. We did kind of a walkthrough with them at Eurobike, and you can check that video out. But I think this really complements the rest of their selection very well. Complete offering for really any walk of life. Some little quick details on it, 20 inch wheels, front and rear. It has a really low center of gravity. It's got a low step frame, so it's easy to get on and off of. It's got the Bosch smart system, a higher level of connectivity. They have these add-on modules. You can have a GPS tracking module with all sorts of security features, lots of different new riding modes. You have this auto mode, it kind of makes it that you don't have to choose the assist level. It just really assists you however you want. This particular model here is the multi tinker vario meaning it has the vario enviolo hub this is a continually variable transmission it comes with the belt drive fully enclosed really clean really easy to use probably the most popular option but if you wanted something a bit more sporty and save a couple of bucks you can go for the touring option it uses the new shimano link glide drivetrain and let's get into some more of the details and i'll kind of walk through the bike and help you understand it and uh, i hope you guys enjoy for this bike it probably makes sense for a lot of people you live in an urban setting you need something a little bit more compact you want to bring it inside your apartment but you don't want it to take up too much space as with all their cargo bikes they're kind of universal in their frame size with the exception of the multi-charger that they have two frame sizes but this saddle it can go down pretty low this is kind of maxed out here but you can actually cut the saddle if you had a shorter rider and you wanted to go down even lower where this can basically go down to about here and this would be good for a rider somewhere between five foot and six foot five so it's a pretty wide range there's also loads of different adjustments here as well so you have all these different options so you can adjust this up and down you can also adjust the angle this is actually the same setup that you're going to find on the tinker as well as the low and this is if you want to be in that more sporty position or maybe you're a bigger rider you want a little extra space if you want to sit a bit more upright or even more relaxed overall maybe you're a shorter rider you need those handlebars closer to you so there's a, a little pin that kind of latches this in place which is good for safety one of the things I really appreciate about this is it's really easy to get on and off of this would be what it's called like a low step frame this frames available in three different colors this is the petrol blue it's also available in a glass gloss white as well as a matte gray which is practically like a matte black color blue as well as the white and the black are available with this black rear rack as well as the front rack however if you wanted to on the utility gray color you could opt for the curry matte finish on there and that actually comes from their multi-charger they have kind of the same colorway there so kind of nice contrast I imagine if you really wanted to you could even potentially paint the racks or something like that but that might be 
too much trouble. I don't know. It's just I'm always thinking about this customization stuff. I think that that's something that we'll eventually get more into. But we'll just talk a little bit more about these accessories. This is a cargo bike, 65 kilogram weight capacity on the rear rack. So that's about 143 pounds, I think. Depending on someone's size, you can fit them. This is the safety bar set up on here right now. And, and it has these uh, side skirts here. It's also available with just a passenger kit, just handlebars and a pad there. You can put up to two child seats in here or you can just kind of pack kids in here. I've seen people put as much as three, but it's really meant for more like two kids or something like that. Really nice, robust steps on the sides here. Heavy duty dual kickstand. I mean, I, I really appreciate that. And that's something that a lot of times when people make cargo bikes, they kind of miss that detail. Risa Mueller took it upon themselves to make their own kickstand. And I, and I really commend them for taking that extra step because it, it's easy just to take one of these off the shelf kickstands which they work but they really don't work well for carrying cargo for putting kids on the back and things like that you know the kids are squirming around you want something really stable and you want something you feel confident in honestly I don't feel confident in a lot of these like off-the-shelf kickstands so some other little details this has this kind of add-on cargo rack but it also is available with the smaller standard rack on the front slightly different weight capacities but they're good to put bags and different things like that I think this one's up to eight kilograms so about 15 16 pounds, well, maybe a little bit more. I guess eight kilograms, it's like kind of, what, 18 pounds? So nonetheless, loads of different options and accessories. And I'm sure there's more and more things that are gonna be coming here. But at the same time, you can fit more standard accessories on here as well. But I think you guys probably wanna get more into the technical specs. So let's do that now. So looking at the front of the bike, you can see it's got uh, front suspension on here, really heavy duty. So this is the Suntour Moby 34 made specifically for cargo bikes with a through axle here, 20 inch wheel, really heavy duty double wall aluminum rim with the Supermoto X tire, which is really popular for e-bikes. It's well fitting because it's a wide tire. It's 2.4 inches wide. It really kind of works for most terrain. If you wanted more of an off-road tire, you can opt for the GX option, which is kind of more of a knobby tire, but for most people's purposes, kind of an all-round tire, this is a really great way to go. It's got really good puncture protection. It's got this reflective sidewall on here. You could run it at a little bit lower pressure to kind of give you a little bit more comfort. It doesn't have a suspension seat post. However, that is an option. Generally recommended, except for if you're a really shorter rider, you might have trouble with that suspension seat post, but there are some custom options that we can do. One of the things I really love is a dropper suspension seat post. So you can drop it down all the way when you come to a light or something like that, but you can pop it up and it still has some suspension. So PN W Coast is, is a really nice setup, but kind of takes a lot to install it. So that might not be the option for everybody, but something to consider. Really wide, nice set of fenders, which is really a must have for any bike that you're gonna be riding, commuting, and kind of use as somewhat of a car replacement. A lot of the parts that we're generally familiar with some of the other recent Mueller bikes, and that's one of the nice things for them is they're able to take their learnings from other models and bring it to this bike. A cafe lock up front here, so you can lock that front wheel really easily. And you can also add a chain to this lock, so it makes it nice if you're locking up. Just really quick things, you can add that chain, you know, somebody, somebody doesn't walk away with the bike. This does use the same key as the battery on the on the bike, which I'll show you guys in a moment. We actually work with another German manufacturer, Abus, and they're able to offer additional locks with the same key. So it's really convenient to be able to add a couple, which I would recommend if you're riding in, in more of an urban setting, because just this on its own is probably not sufficient. Unless you live in some more remote areas, maybe, maybe it's just fine if you live on an island and people can't get too far. But it's getting better, I guess, with some of the, like the GPS and some of those sort of things. This is a coil suspension fork which is really great because it's very low maintenance you can adjust the preload with just the, the the switch of a dial on the side and it also has a lockout on this side which i really appreciate so again to the back of the bike we got the same 20 inch wheel set up but now we look at the drivetrain you can't see it too well behind these wheel guards this is the vario version so it's got an enviolo continuous variable transmission practically zero maintenance on the hub occasionally you need to change the the cables as they stretch out really easy to use really convenient and i think a lot of people really appreciate it for carrying cargo sometimes if you come to a stop you forget to shift down or something like that you can really easily shift at a stand 
standstill, something you can't do with the derailleur version. If you're more experienced, you want something a bit more sporty, uh, the derailleur version is a really good way to go. The derailleur is also a little bit more efficient, so I think a lot of people appreciate that as well, but on an electric bike, maybe it's not such a big concern. The Enviolo also comes with the belt drive, which I think a lot of people appreciate. It's really clean, really low maintenance, three or four to one, people generally opt for the Enviolo version, in our shop at least. You can also really appreciate, you know, some of the racking down here as we're looking here. You can see this additional rail here. One thing that's really nice about this is, is, is it's made to accommodate panniers. If you have some items on the rack and you wanted to put a pannier on there, they're not interfering with each other, which is kind of a nice detail. And you can see these really robust foot rests here. I could imagine they might eventually offer some wider ones or something like that as well, but definitely a nice setup and you can attach a bunch of things to here. You could attach straps here so and for the motor on the bike you probably want to check it out from the other side because as you see it's pretty well hidden into the bike for a lot of people they might not even fully recognize that this is an electric bike just a bike with a really heavy duty tube here but let's check it out from the other side but while we're here you can just see this gates belt drive so this is a carbon belt drive inside here. There's carbon strands, really durable, really long lasting, and you don't have to oil it or anything like that. And I think a lot of people really appreciate that. So you can see this is a Bosch motor, more specifically the Bosch CX motor. And this is part of Bosch's new smart system. And basically it's very similar to the previous generation four CX motor. It has a lot of the same specs. It's 85 Newton meters of torque, 250 Watts, but really plenty of power. A lot of times people hear 250 watts, you're like, 250 watts for a cargo bike, is that enough? Really, from my side, I would put this motor against pretty much anything else out there on the market. I mean, all the legal stuff, I should say. The motor uses a technology called pedal assist. It takes a thousand senses per second. It's sensing how fast you're pedaling, how hard you're pedaling, and how fast the wheel is moving. And based on all these details, along with what assistance level you're in, it's gonna provide assistance. And it's really intuitive. Really, from my experience, the most intuitive system on the market. Some other details that are kind of unique about this new motor system System. It has some different modes to it. It's available with this Tor Plus mode, which gives you a variety of different assistant levels all in one. Or you have the Auto mode, which is even more dynamic. So when you're riding more on a flat ground, you don't really need so much power. It's not gonna give it to you, but as soon as you need more, it's gonna give it to you. You can see the charge port, which is located here. This is where you would charge the battery, but you can also remove the battery to charge it as well. So the battery on this bike is a 625 watt hours. I see you're gonna probably find somewhere around 40 miles range on average out of here, but if you're carrying really heavy loads, riding at higher assistance level, maybe you're gonna be somewhere closer to this like 20, 25 mile range. Here in the US, you're gonna see 20 miles an hour out of this CX motor, but in Europe, it's gonna be uh, 25 kilometers per hour, which is about 15.5 miles per hour. You can check out this little cubby, if you will. It actually has a little combination lock. I'm kind of familiar with this from my days working in a luggage shop uh, years ago. It's something that I used to do actually. It has a little like kind of elastic pocket if you wanna have uh, some stuff separated. I imagine you could put a jacket in there, put whatever you, you want, extra locks, different stuff like that, and then just lock it away. I mean, obviously it's not very high security, but it's well enough. It's as they say, keep the honest thieves out. It's unfortunate that we have to worry about that stuff, but uh, you know, that's the reality. And for shifting the gears, as you shift the gears, this little indicator kind of changes. When it's up in a hill like this, it's like the low gear. As you twist it towards you, it goes flatter, and that's kind of the higher gear. They call it uh, infinitely adjustable because you have these really minute changes that you, that you can do here. Pretty cool little flick bell there. <laughs> so for the display on the bike, you have a couple of different options. This particular display is the Kiox display. It also comes with the Intuvia display. These are the new Intuvia, new Kiox. These are specifically to go with the smart system. To turn the system on, you just have a little power button on the top portion here. Kind of cool system. You have these like light indicators. This can actually work just on its own. You don't necessarily need the display. What you would do is move this wire that's coming from the motor 
going uh, directly into here, which is nice if you wanted to really have that slim down system to really keep it simple. You know, some people might be concerned if somebody stealing that or different things like that, but loads of different options on here. I'm not gonna go through all the details on here. I'll have a different video on the display, but you can see, you know, just some basics here. So navigation, you can uh, connect an app to it. You can kind of cycle through these different screens and have my phone paired to it, the battery life. You can see the, the light indicator. There's actually a high beam on the light, which is pretty nice. And you could just cycle through the screens. You're gonna get most of the details when you connect your, your phone to it. You can set up a, a map. It has like turn by turn directions. It's not gonna show you like the full map inside there, but it will give you kind of the route that you're going, different things like that, pretty cool. These are all editable and customizable depending on what you wanna do, but you can see your range. This will tell you how many miles you have left on eco mode. If you were to change to these different assistance levels, it's gonna change how many miles you have left on there. If you go to turbo mode, you're really maxing out the power. When you're riding it, it'll show you like what your power is, what your cadence is, what the motor's putting in, different things like that. You, you really have all the things you might find in a normal cycle computer. So you do have what's called walk assist. So that's this button here. That's the same button of changing the assist. Now you do need to be in an assist level, but then what you're gonna do is just hold that minus button down for a couple of seconds. And then basically, you're gonna move the bike and it's gonna activate walk assist. So as I'm changing this, you can see that this color is changing, which is pretty nice. So really simple visual indicator. And as I said, you don't need to use the display with it. This is the select button, plus and minus. If you wanted to have the lights on or off, this particular bike, it's set to be on all the time. You have the high beam and low beam. For some bikes, uh, you can set it to, to, to turn it off uh, is another option. And for the brakes on the bike, we have the Magura MT5. They're quad piston calipers, really nice lever feel up here. You do have the ability to adjust the lever. There's a little screw in here that you can adjust the reach. Say you have smaller hands or bigger hands, you want it further or, or closer to your hand, you can, you can kind of change that. But these are hydraulic disc brakes. And let's check out the, the rotor and the caliper to give you a closer look at, at, at the brakes in action. So you can see we have two pistons on either side and that really just gives you more surface area more braking a little bit easier like modulation of the brake lever and really heavy duty rotors on here so this is 180 millimeters but one of the things about the Magura rotors they're a little bit thicker than some of the other ones and that really helps them hold up quite well in these like tougher conditions of carrying more weight in the cargo and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a little bit different for us because uh, Tara's not behind the camera, but hopefully we'll be getting her back there soon enough. I really enjoyed this bike. I've been excited about it for a while. I'm sure a lot of people are really gonna appreciate it. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to reach out to us, put it in the comments. Uh, if you, you're looking for one of these, we'd be happy to help you. We have several shops, one in New York, one in Long Beach, California, and actually here in uh, Delaware as well which I'm located at the moment. Well, enjoy and uh, see you soon.